An interesting report came out yesterday that uh, the Blue Jays may be sellers, and then they took it a step further that the Baltimore Orioles are interested in closer Jordan Romano if the Blue Jays do in fact decide to sell. So we'll break that down on this episode of Jays Digest, as well as Dalton Varsho. I know he had a bit of a cold patch recently, but he won the Blue Jays the game last night single-handedly, so we'll have that and much more coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Rionis, alongside host Nick Gossett. No stadium background today. I'm uh, I'm on a layover. I'm back in Montreal for today's episode, so I'm at home, no longer in one of the stadiums doing the tour of Major League Baseball or classic Major League Baseball at that. But uh, yeah, let us know which stadium you want to see me in next. I believe that uh, the Olympic Stadium in Montreal, the Expo's former home, was the one that won the comment section on last uh, on yesterday's video. So I'll probably get that out for you guys, but uh, we're in a bit of a hurry here. So we're no stadium today, layover in Montreal, but I'll be back tomorrow with the new stadium. But Nick, some interesting reports coming out here that the Blue Jays might be sellers. I know they got a big win last night. And even John Schneider said, I know it's 40 something games into the season, but that was a huge effing win. That's what he said last night. And, I echo that same sentiment. It it felt like a playoff game last night. It felt like the Blue Jays had to go out there and play nine innings of perfect baseball. They were up against Corbin Burns. They were up against one of the best teams in the MLB in the Baltimore Orioles, and they managed to get the job done. Obviously, the offense wasn't great, but they got timely hitting when they needed it. And wow, that was one of the best games of the year, one of the best wins of the year last night. Yeah, and they were shorthanded. They only had nine players that couldn't pinch hit. A viral illness is going around on the team, going around where I am too. I'm super sick as well, so bear with me with that. Before you get into it, a quick reminder, hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 13,000 subs, and yeah, Peter will have his background for the next video, but let's get into it. I kind of dropped yesterday a bit of a bombshell report from Bob Nightingale and said, report Blue Jays closure, Jordan Romano garnering interest from the Orioles if the Jays end up being sellers. And we covered that a couple days ago. Peter, basically just highlighting that from Shai Davidi, Ken Rosenthal, that if the Jays continue down a spiraling downward path, then they could be sellers at the deadline. And you mentioned that there's already reports of potential uh, for an Orioles-Blue Jays trade, an interdivision trade. And a lot of that has to do with, of course, the Orioles are in a competitive window and Felix Bautista, their star closer, is out for the year. But he basically said that Romano is on a short list of relievers that has been considered, uh, Bob Nightingale of USA Today reports, including uh, Ryan Helsley from the Cardinals. But he also notes that those players would only be considered if their teams are sellers ahead of the deadline, which is still up in the air. And then, of course, Shai Davidi mentioned a few days ago that if the Jays continue to struggle, they could look towards and consider a full teardown. However, there's no indication right now that the Blue Jays are making Romano in available in trade talks. The Jays are now 19-22 and 22 after yesterday's win. But if they do keep losing, uh, they could be sellers at the deadline. But this is very interesting. Already getting calls for star closer uh, Jordan Romano, which would make sense for the Orioles, would be a bit of a, a hurting one to, for the Jays to trade. But, I mean, it would make sense if they're considering to be sellers at the deadline. Yeah, it does make sense. He's uh, an ex- I don't know if he's an expiring deal, One but or two uh, years or something. yeah, so he's um he's a cheaper option as well. He's not someone that's going to break the bank if you go out and acquire him. Romano, I know he gets a lot of flack from the fan base, but he has been one of the most consistent relievers in baseball over the past 5 plus years or so and 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 he's good. You know, he's he's still good and I know maybe he doesn't have the lights out stuff that uh Felix Bautista has, or he's not uh, Craig Kimbrell and and been one of the best closers in baseball for the past 10 plus years, but he's still very consistent. And you know exactly what you're getting out of Romano. Could look shaky at times, but he's solid, Nick. And I'm sure a lot of teams would love to have his services. So yeah, I don't even think the Blue Jays are not listening on anyone right now. They would be stupid to not be listening if a team were to offer them a trade today, let's say about Vladimir Guerrero Jr. or Danny Jansen or uh, even Jordan Romano for that case. I'm sure they're listening and they're doing their due diligence in that sense. But yeah, it's a little bit early to declare them to be sellers at this year's deadline because a couple of good weeks and you can get back in the mix of things and you can figure things out and and you're able to be in that playoff race yet again. But if they keep playing 500 baseball, that's not going to get the job done. That's not going to lead them to the playoffs. So, yeah, they need a couple of good weeks here before having a full-on assessment of their team and their deadline approach. 
but it wouldn't shock me if that's the direction they go in if they keep playing at an up and down pace like they have thus far. Yeah, and hopefully with the win yesterday, that kind of starts an upward direction. But you look at his stats, even though Jay, some Jays fans think that he's, I mean, he has been shaky at times, but no matter, even every year that he's been shaky, he's always finished with an, really an elite ERA and ending with an elite season. There are times where he gives up leads when uh, he comes in. Sometimes there's times where, you know, tie games, he gives up a lot of runs. But he has been, you mentioned it, one of the best closers in baseball since 20. 21 when he really took over that full-time closer job in that great year with uh, Marcus Simeon not to bring back memories but it was uh he is a guy that would garner a lot of interest obviously because most teams would want a guy like Jordan Romano especially if you're the Baltimore Orioles but it's gonna be interesting to see uh if they end up being sellers because this is going to be a conversation we definitely return to if they do but I don't know I want to keep Jordan Romano because right now our bullpen is looking pretty it's starting to look better but, I mean, unless they go full Selma, which I doubt will happen, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting report, though. Yeah, and we got to remember as well that relievers are so erratic from year to year. You never know what you're getting out of them, but the really good ones, they're pretty consistent year in, year out. And Jordan Romano is one of the really good ones. Would he be the closer on, uh, I don't know, let's, let's put him on um, another team, any other team. Would he be the closer on the Tampa Bay Rays over Pete Fairbanks? Maybe not, but he would be their eighth inning guy, and he would be a lot of teams' eighth inning guy if he got traded to them and they already had an established closer. So he he's still an elite reliever in the league right now, and I know he gets a lot of unnecessary flack from the fan base, but he's solid and could fetch the Blue Jays a pretty good return if they decide to go in that direction. But he is a fan favorite. He is someone that I want to see be a part of the solution in Toronto. So... If they can figure things out, I'm sure Jordan Romano is in those plans. But if they can't figure it out, then you have a pretty big asset on your hands and you could get some decent return in exchange for him. Yeah, let us know your thoughts are on that. Do you want the Ontario native to get traded? Yes or no? I guess it depends on the direction of the team. But Peter, let's touch on Dalton Varsho. And we didn't make a video yesterday, but if you watched that game yesterday... He won them the game. He robbed a home run. He hit a home run in the top of the eighth off of Yannir Cano, who was an unbelievable, one of the best relievers in the game. And now he is starting to turn into a very elite player. He has the most defensive run saved since 2021 in a lot of innings, over 2,800. And Peter has already put up a 1.8 B-War, even though he's only hitting 214. He's on a bit of a cold stretch aside from his home run yesterday, but he has been so elite defensively. The trade is starting to look. I know a lot of people were hating on it. If he can get his batting average up a little bit and continue to hit for this power, I mean, he's going to be a cornerstone for the team for the next half decade or even longer. And that's exactly what the goal was with uh, Ross Atkins with that move. As much as we all like to hit on Ross Atkins, this is a uh, this is a good one. Yeah, well, it's still going to take a while for me to to see. Like, I think Moreno is going to be a very good player. I know he's struggling, and he only hit his first home run of the season yesterday. So it, it's hard to judge a trade off a year and a bit, a year and change, which is what we have as a sample size to judge this trade. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer. But Dalton Varsho, I saw a comparison. So he's got a higher F war, than, uh, which is fan graphs war, than uh, Gabriel Moreno and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. combined. And I know Gurriel got off to that great start this season. Cold. He's cooled off significantly. Uh, Gabe Moreno... Only hit his first home run uh, yesterday, and he was not hitting well either. So, yeah, they're not having great starts to the season, similar to what happened to Dalton Varsho last year. So you need a couple of years as a sample size to judge a trade. I think this is just um, – we don't need to do this anymore. We don't have to compare the three players side by side. It just doesn't make sense anymore because they all offer different things. Guriel is a very good contact hitter, probably the best hitter out of the three. Gabriel Moreno has a cannon of an arm. He's a bit of a unicorn back there behind the plate in the sense where he's got a great arm. He's very athletic. Reminds me a lot of JT Real Muto minus the power. And Dalton Varsho is unlike anyone that we've seen really in in the past five plus years. Uh, He reminds me a lot of Mike Trout out there. He's like a linebacker playing left field and center field. He's He's unique. They're all unique players and they all offer different things. And it worked out for the Diamondbacks last year because they made the World Series. Now it's working out for the Blue Jays this year because where the hell would they be without Dalton Varsho's heroics in the outfield and his timely home runs and uh, his timely hits? So all he has to do is be a league average hitter because he's second in the league in defensive runs saved right now. 
He's got uh, six in center field and then two in left field, which is ridiculous. Like the guy plays multiple positions at an elite level. So just enjoy who we have right now in Toronto. Don't always have to constantly compare him to Moreno and Guriel because they're totally different players. So it's going to kind of be hard to draw an assessment if we're always comparing those three guys side by side. Yeah, and it doesn't even really matter anymore because the Jays are no. focused on the Bershaw. trade is done. Yeah, exactly. The trade is done. And there's no going back on it now. But it's a very good point you made. He has a 1.8 war. But if you think about, given how bad the Jays' offense has been, he had that stretch where he had like five home runs in three games. He won them a couple games there. He won them a game yesterday. And he always uh, plays elite defense and has been one of the best defenders since 2021. So appreciate Dalton Versho. And uh, sometimes the trade works out for both sides. We won't know for probably five years at, until who the actual winner is because of all the sure. prospects. And hopefully by then, the Jays will have some sort of... Uh, I don't know, winning season and maybe a championship, but that might be asking for a lot. Any quick final thoughts here before we wrap up? No. I'm just, uh, I'm happy that Verstro is on our team and I'm sure the Diamondbacks are happy that they have their own players too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can appreciate all the players involved in the trade and I, I like the Diamondbacks. I hope they do well. They're like my de facto national league team. So good for them. Good for the Blue Jays because Dalton Varsho has been playing really good baseball. And I was just so happy to see them win last night's game. They they needed that in the worst possible way, Nick. And John Schneider kind of uh, admitted that at the end of the game. Like it, he kind of, you saw the relief in himself. Uh, and that was a tough matchup. Barrios was coming down with some sort of flu, some sort of illness, like half the team is. And he gutted out a, a great start. And then Corbin Burns was uh, Corbin Burns as usual, but the Jays got to Yanir Cano late in the game, and that was all Don Varsho's doing. So great to see them win last night. Hopefully they can keep it going tonight with Chris Bassett on the mound. Yeah, hopefully against a very good Baltimore Orioles team, probably one of the best or definitely one of the best in baseball. Without a wrap it up, if you want to check out a video from yesterday, click on your screen now, and we'll see you tomorrow.